Welcome to Business Talk Sister Gok. I'm Becca. And I'm Ruthie. And today's episode title is How to Build Strategic Partnerships. And uh, today with us, we have a serial entrepreneur who's done so many things. And I'm going to have her um, introduce herself and give us a little bit about what do you do? Awesome. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Rebecca and Ruthie, for having me on. I'm really thrilled to be here. This is a ton of fun. Um, so my name is Shula Farher Gemma. A lot of people call me FG because, you know, hyphenating the last name seemed like a good idea at the time, but now it's just a really long name. Um, but I, um, like you said, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I started uh, working on my own when I um, had my first child, which was about 25 years ago now. She just turned 25 in March, which like blows my mind that I have a child who's 25. But anyway, and um, did a bunch of different things. But within the in the last kind of 10 years or so, I've primarily focused on um, sponsorship and helping platform owners find sponsors for their platforms. Um, but what's kind of the, the constant that's strung through everything I've done is just um, networking and finding strategic partnerships. Um, which has really kind of leveraged my business and helped me grow faster just by creating those relationships. Yeah. So how would you define a strategic partnership? Um, It's really kind of, it's like a symbiotic relationship. It's really something where um, both parties are getting something out of the deal. Like it's not going to work otherwise. Um, So it's, you know, lots of times the simplest form is like somebody who maybe has the same demographic or has the same um, type of customer as you do, but they're not doing something exactly the same as you. So they're not really in competition. So if you think of like a realtor and a mortgage broker, um, you know, they have the same customer but they don't, they're not in competition with each other. They actually uh, work really well together because you can't do a real estate. Well, you can do a real estate deal, I guess, without either, but it's easier if you have both, especially if you're looking to get a mortgage and have someone help you find your house. So, Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about your why. Like what was the moment that you were like, this is really important to develop strategic partnerships and I want to pursue this more. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, I didn't even know kind of what it was. And way back in the early days, my first business was a business where I did remanufacture toner cartridges and later kind of grew it into doing laser printer repairs and stuff like that as well. But the growth in that business was primarily um, through joining BNI, which is Business Network International. Um, I didn't really know it existed. I happened to just randomly meet a woman who invited me to go to her meeting. And I went there and the fact, what I did was very unique. It was back in 1996. This is just when Ashley was born. And um, there weren't like a ton of companies doing this. So what I was doing was very unique. And I started getting referrals and, you know, people saying to me, oh, I know somebody. And, and I just, I like, I mean, it blew my mind, first of all, just the kindness of everyone that they were helping me grow my business. Um, Because prior to this, I felt very kind of isolated. And, you know, when you start your first business, you're like, I haven't a clue what I'm doing. Um, So that was great. But it just like it opened my mind to the fact that, um, you know, you can really like do a lot by giving first and helping other businesses. And it just um, builds up a whole bunch of goodwill and um, um, just kind of really leverages what you have. Like there's so many connections out there that people I think don't see. And I feel like you just have to come at it from a, a position of abundance rather than, you know, I want to keep all the business to myself or I'm like, I, I got to be, you know, driving myself constantly to get as much as I can. I mean, there's, there's a lot out there. And if you can take an easier path that by working with somebody, it helps you find clients easier or bring value to your clients easier. I think that's definitely the way to go. Okay. So when you're looking into starting with strategic partnerships, what should be your first step with that? Um, It's just building the relationship. It's all about relationships. So, um, you know, having the conversation, uh, kind of leaning into what their goals are, what they're looking to achieve, um, seeing if there's like a good mix, um, seeing it as well if, if, you know, if you kind of have the same values, um, uh, you don't want to work with somebody who's just like so far away from kind of where you're aligned in your mm-hmm. values that there's always going to be kind of a conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's, it's like when you ask the question, when you're looking to start, it's kind of not even that it's, it's to me, it's just kind of happened naturally. I've got, I've kind of met people as I'm kind of going through my life. So it's not like I sit down in the morning, I was like, okay, strategic partnerships, let's make a list and go after them. It's kind of Um, going to events or meeting people and I see that connection and just starting having the conversation there 
Um, so it's kind of more a natural thing, I think, than, than um, like actually going out and, and systematically trying to do it. Um, because then it just, I don't know, there's some, I, mean, I can't even put in words like the difference, but there's something about um, going out and actively trying to do it that kind of, kind of feels kind of icky to me. It needs to be like mm -hmm. a natural mm -hmm. thing where you just kind of, you meet somebody and you just know it's good. I guess it's like dating, you know, if you're like constantly <laughs> going out saying, hey, you want to go out with me or versus, you know, just meeting somebody and clicking and, and starting that kind of that relationship slowly mm -hmm. probably a horrible analogy but <laughs> <laughs> no I think that's perfect um can you give us an example just so people can um be like visualize what it would look like so you have this connection with that person and then how do you pursue that relationship in a way that doesn't make you feel icky <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um probably the the first one I had ended up being my business partner for years and years we're still involved in businesses together but again, back in the early days through BNI, I was doing um, tonnery manufacturing and he had a company that he did um, computer networks. So he, he would go into to companies and work on their network and set up their computers and all this kind of stuff. He was in a separate BNI chapter, but um, people kept saying to us, you know, you need to meet this guy. You guys could pass a lot of business together. Um, so we um, got in touch with each other and met at a Starbucks and kind of talked business for a little while. And, you know, into the conversation, we kind of found out that we were both really interested in real estate and passive income. And we started talking about that. And he, we talked about Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which was a book we both read. And he made like comments, did you see at the end of that book, they have that game that's like 200 bucks. What kind of crazy person would pay that? And I was like, uh, that would be me. I have it at home if you want to play it. <laughs> and it just like, it, it grew into like, I was the... I call myself the best man at his wedding. His brother was actually his best man. And I was like the best groom's lady or something, but I didn't like that title. So I just took the title of the best man. But we've been friends like for years ever since and involved in all kinds of different businesses and things together. Um, we, he lives in California now. We have a standing once a month meeting that like we make maybe once every three months, but we just do a catch up. But it's just, um, it's, it's just a great friendship, but it, was, it, it happened very naturally. It wasn't like, again going down through a list and saying okay this is somebody that I'm going to try and you know just it feels kind of different so it's as you're like out there and this would be advice for your audience as you're out there and you're talking to people and meeting people just kind of think beyond what the the current conversation is to see if this if, if you think there maybe is more in there because they may not have seen it either and just kind of approach it and say hey you know I was thinking um maybe we could help each other out but I think you always have to lead with you giving first um, you know, mm -hmm. so like what Jeremy did, the, the, when we met that day, the, he was actually going to, um, he's meeting, he's being I meeting, it was at lunchtime and he was presenting, um, he was doing what we call a 10 minute presentation. And, um, you know, at the end of our one-to-one -one at the coffee shop, I says, well, why don't I come with you and I can help you hand out your handouts and all that kind of stuff. And he was just mm -hmm. blown away. He's like, seriously? And I was like, yeah, why not? I, I don't have anything going on after this, so let's do it. And, you know, it, not that I was doing that to kind of win his favor or anything, but it's just like if you have that kind of more natural giving and um, looking to serve, um, I think it, it, you do a lot better with it as well. But it has mm -hmm. to be natural. It can't be like, OK, I'm going to pretend I'm, you know, interested in this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you identify what your value proposition is that makes a, a partnership beneficial to the person you're approaching? Yeah, so you want to you want to see what it is that you can bring to them. Um, you want to like you know tie into their goals, and it's and it can be all kinds of different things. Sometimes it can just be like an introduction. You know that um, you know they're releasing a book, but uh, maybe like. Um, you know, an introduction to you guys because you have a pod podcast and that would be good for that person to kind of talk about his book or, you know, there's so many different things. It's hard to say, you know, it's just an ABC thing. Um, but uh, just kind of look for where you can help or, or connections you can make, um, things that you can bring to the table that will help their, their clients or students. Um, just you, you're always looking for the win-win. Mm -hmm. So what is one of the biggest lessons you've learned about strategic partnerships in your career? Um, the biggest lessons, that's a good question. I think the, the, the big lesson for me is go in giving first. Don't go in expecting something because I've had people approach me and they're like, OK, I see you do this. This is what I need. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> nice to meet you too um you know just kind of go in with more of the giving and more of the open-mindedness of um you know I'm not sure where this is going to go but let's talk 
Um, sometimes mm -hmm. it's not as obvious in the beginning, but I, I think if you kind of go in with that mindset, um, rather than a what's in it for me type of mindset, I think that really helps as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know we, when we first talked with you on the phone, um, you had said that you were a fan of, of Gary Vee. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of his whole spiel, you know, like it's just giving to people and giving to people and always looking for ways that you can give and not, um, like he just says like give 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 and then it's like here's how you can help me yeah um, so yeah I feel like that I hear that a lot in what you're saying right and if you've ever been on the receiving end of that I had um I was on um a thing one day that I had bought this product um uh, by this uh, woman Zara Skyer she's awesome but she does this whole like and I had said it I think Google heard me but I had said it one day I said I wish you could find a personal organizer for your computer because I have like files everywhere and emails everywhere and archives and I'm trying to find something that's like 10 minutes to like, what was that person's name and how do I find it? So she has this course that teaches you how to organize your Google and have like a zero inbox and all this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so, so she had this open office hours thing and um, in the chat, I, was, I asked a question um, about what I was doing. So the open office hours was more about how she released her product than, than using the product. She does both. And I asked a question in the chat and um, this woman responded to me and she says, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to like help you out with that if you want to set up a call. So she set up a call with me and the call was like all about me. It wasn't like a pitch. It wasn't anything like that. She asked me to explain the issue I was having. She came up with some really good suggestions and that was it. There was like, there's nothing else. It wasn't like a, hey, I helped you. Now, what are you going to do for me or anything like that? And I still don't know how I can help this woman, but all the time, every time I see her doing something, I'm like, okay, can I help with that? Because there's like, there's just such a huge sense of reciprocity um mm -hmm. that you you just want to give like if somebody does something really nice for you you immediately like it's it's an unbalance or an imbalance and you immediately feel like you need to come back and do something for them so it just it really works it's it's just so natural hmm. yeah that's awesome so you had kind of said earlier that you have this standing one month uh check-in that maybe sometimes isn't always you don't always meet once a month but like right um, yeah so how have you seen technology play a role in kind of building and fostering those strategic partnerships? Um, just like, I mean, I've always, um, like I'm not very technical, so I don't use much of the fancy stuff, but I've like, I've run my businesses, um, or especially this business um, with my phone and Gmail, like most of my life. So um, now that Zoom and things have come in, it's, it's just really handy. Like you can actually see the person and have the conversation um you know you can take your phone and like show them around to where you are at the moment or you know whatever so I think that's it just like gives an, an added layer dimension to it um you know the the technology we have for that call is we, it's a calendar call that I just set up when way back when it happens you know once a month it pops up in each of our calendars sometimes we make it sometimes we don't and there's like no kind of hey you missed the call or anything it's like if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen we're busy it's not a big deal um so I don't know beyond that, like we usually do hop on Zoom and chat and it's handy as well. Like the last time we were actually talking about a business thing. So, you know, he was able to share his screen and we walked through it and, you know, but it's, it's, I'm more kind of just like hands on, not, not that techie in most things that I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cause I, I definitely think face-to-face -face interaction builds a lot more trust in a lot of ways. It, it does. It does. And it's been hard this year with COVID that, you know, you're not really seeing people face to face, but I guess you are on the computer and stuff, but you know, it's, it's like in business as well, I've, a lot of what I've done hasn't been like a, a typical uh, brick and mortar where I have customers coming into a place or whatever. So a lot of times I've done business with people for years that like I may never meet them or meet them, you know, eventually meet them. It's like, oh my God. And before Zoom, it's like, oh my God, you look so different to what I thought you were going to look like. Because you, know? <laughs> you build up this image in your head of what you think they look like. And it's usually like totally different. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and you mentioned a little bit about you have to be careful to make sure that. Um, the person you're choosing a strategic partnership with is someone who has similar values. How do you yeah. identify um, if they're going to be a good value fit? And like in, in, does it just take a lot of time to get there? Or um, how do you, how do you define your values first to see if they match? 
Yeah, um, I think it, it's. I think it's. Um, it takes a lot of time, and it doesn't. So I think there's probably red flags just in um, the conversations you're having. If you hear things that that kind of sound selfish, or 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 what's in it for me, or that kind of thing, um, you, you can get some red flags. Like sometimes I'll have a conversation with someone, and I'm just like, yeah, no, I, I'm just not feeling it. Mm -hmm. um, and but it does take time as well. There's like. Um, you know, time to to kind of build the relationship, deepen it. Um, so that does take time and trust. Um, and then, I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question? Is how do you identify your own values? Yeah. So my own values is like some of my big values are um, kind of loyalty is a big one for me. Mm -hmm. um, trust. Um, you know, do what you say you're going to do. That's like, I've got a very, uh, what I call a, a high say do ratio. So if I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it, you know, I'll do it um, or I'll renegotiate it. So, you know, if, for example, um, I couldn't make it today, I'd probably have reached out and said, like, I'm so, so sorry, but this is going on. These are the times I can make it. But it's like, I, I really want to be reliable so that, um, you know, when I say I'm going to do something, I show up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big thing for me as well. So if, if you know, I'm working with someone who's constantly kind of, because to me, it is if, if somebody... Um, if somebody doesn't respect that, it, it's, it's kind of, to me, it feels like a lack of respect. So, you know, that's something that I, I really like in people when they, you know, do that. Like with you guys, it's been great. We had a great phone conversation. We're now we're having this conversation. 15 minutes late today. Doesn't matter. 15 <laughs> minutes is nothing. It's like you were 15 minutes late, but you tell, told me like, you know, prior to that, hey, this is happening. Life happens. That's fine. But it was just like, yeah, you know, um, we were supposed to do this thing with Sheila today, but uh, don't feel like it. We'll just uh, <laughs> we'll just not show up, <laughs> you know. So it's just like that. You just have to be you have to have, I guess, that trust in people mm -hmm. that when they say they're going to do something, they'll do it or they'll be like very upfront about, um, you know, I, I'm fine with like if things don't work out or if, if you, you know, some, life happens. But just like be on top of it, say, hey, you know, I know that I said I was going to do this. I can't do it now, but this is what I can do or whatever. You know, it's like life happens. I have no issue with that. But it's just kind of like the whole ghosting thing, like really annoys me. It's like, OK, <laughs> mm -hmm. so we just had this great conversation and you said yes. And now I'm sitting here wondering what the heck happened. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so important, like being a person of integrity and like actually doing what you say you're going to do that like speaks volume about volumes about people's character. So um, I think that's really good that you mentioned that. Uh, yeah, so yeah. To me, it's huge. I was just thinking about like specifically with Gary Vee, but like really anyone that you admire and you've maybe seen from afar and you're like, man, I'd really like to get to know that person or um, just see what it would be like to work with them or whatever. How do you go about connecting with someone or approaching a strategic partner that you've never like actually <laughs> spoken <Yeah>. before? <laughs> so I, I actually have a story. It's, it's, it wasn't a strategic partnership per se, well, I guess it was in a way, but I was, when um, my second daughter was uh, doing college tours, um, I drove her and her friend um, pretty much around the entire of New England, like visiting colleges for about four days. So um, they were kind of, I had this minivan and I had the middle seats were out of it. So they were like way in the back. It was like, I was a limo driver and they're like <laughs> chatting away and doing their thing. So I was listening to audiobooks, and somebody on Facebook had recommended, um, Profit First by Mike McCollowitz. Whoa, so, we're reading, reading that. that right now. Yeah. Oh my God, really? Oh, he yeah. is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> so, you're going to love this story then. So um, so I'm driving around for four days with him in my ears because I had earbuds in because I, at the time I didn't have Bluetooth or I wasn't working or whatever, you know? So, um, or they were listening to the radio. I think that was it. So I'm driving around with him in my ears. So like at this point, I think like we're like the best of friends because I've just heard his entire life story. I, I read that book then I, got, I bought the others and read the, or listened to those. Um, so I come back from the four days of going around colleges and I look him up online and I'm like, oh my God, he has an event. So I, I was like, I'm just going to reach out to him. So I reached out and said, hey, this is what I do. I find sponsors for events. Um, I'd love to work with you. And he actually responded like he responded. <laughs> I was like, I know, chills, right? So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, my God, like, now what do I do? Crap. <laughs> so 
<laughs> so, um, so he responded. He said he was interested. He wants to know how it works. I told him that. And he's like, well, I'd um, like to meet you. And he lives in New Jersey. And he's like, could you come to New Jersey um, and meet me for lunch? I'm like, sure. You get a seven hour drive. I can do that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> in your head, you're like, absolutely. I'm making yeah, this Yep. Out. Yep. <laughs> so I, I um, drive down to New Jersey. I get up early in the morning, drive down to New Jersey to meet him for lunch. He told me some restaurant in this town. So I have it on GPS and I get down there. So I'm listening to his book on the way down as well. I'm like, okay, now I have to prepare, you know, <laughs> like studying him. <laughs> so um, I sound like a stalker. I'm just hearing myself speak here. But anyway, so um, I meet, I get, I walk into the restaurant and the restaurant is empty. And I hear the woman behind the counter on the phone saying she's here. I'm like, wow, and that's impressive. Like he didn't even bother showing up unless I actually showed up. So I go over and sit down. He comes over. Um, we talk. He's wicked nice. Um, he ends up hiring me to do his um, his event, which I did for about four years. And um, then I get in the car and drive the seven hours back up to Massachusetts again. But it was like, like. It, it was just one of those things where I was like, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to send the email. And then I was like terrified. I was like, what did I just do? Why would I do that? <laughs> you know? like, Who do I think I am? You know, but it, it worked out really well. So it was, it was, it was really fun. Mm. have this but, surreal uh, moment of just like oh me you want you want to meet with me <laughs> yeah exactly I was like clearly you don't know who I am <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so and it we, was, uh, we totally get that feeling because we've literally been like with you one time was like I really want to interview this guy he just seems so awesome so she filled out the contact form on his website <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was like I mean he's the CEO of this really big clothing manufacturing company, Stormy Cromer, and so like I was like, what if I just if I just fill it out, we'll see what happens. And then a couple of days later, we got this email and it was this thread of like someone who had forwarded it and forwarded it and forwarded it, like all these different people, like, wow. who should, you know, and then it got to him and then he reached out and was like, I would love to be on your podcast. And I was like, almost wow. passed out. I was oh, like, that's amazing. <laughs> he was that's like amazing. calling me like squealing. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and we did. And they were like some of my favorite interviews because he was just like so genuine and just like, I don't know. We've done so many interviews. I don't know if I could really pick a favorite, but I really, it was really fun to get to meet him. And he's very, so cool. that's, that's he's awesome. And I'm glad yeah. to, that you're going to like put this one in now as your favorite. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 yeah. Shuffle things around. Yeah. There you go. No, this is my favorite. But you know what? Here's the thing though. A lot of people wouldn't do that. They'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, I wish I could do that, but he'd never do it. So like what you lost nothing by sending, like maybe the time you sent it you, you put in the form or whatever mm -hmm. but you really lost, lost nothing doing it and I think that's why like we have these voices in our head that like we're not enough and why would mm -hmm. like he's he's this big CEO and this big guy and I'm just like this little you know it, it's like we've got to get over that and yeah. I try really hard to get over that a lot because I can be I have the same conversations like oh yeah I'm not just going to reach out to him it's going to be weird like I mean this whole Michael Collins <laughs> thing it was like literally really stalking I felt like a stalker in my head you know <laughs> um, so yeah and I don't want people to think that it was just like I'm going to do this and I just got up and did it like it took me a month to like hype myself up to be like okay yeah okay, I'm gonna send it to you. <laughs> yeah. see I'm the opposite if I don't do it like right then I talk myself out of it mm, so I, if I literally hadn't got like I was on the website there was a contact form and if I hadn't done it I wouldn't have done it because then I'd have like come up with all the reasons why not to do it and it was a bad idea and mm -hmm. blah 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 and then I just wouldn't have done it mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm doing go ahead I I was gonna say too like I forget how much I do this um and people I don't think other people do it all the time, but it's a really good habit is just like that immediate response you were talking about, like, wow, this person's really cool. I should send them something. But at the same time, I have kind of like learned the hard way <laughs> that I can't do too many of those in one month or somebody falls through the cracks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, if I am really excited about somebody, like I need to make sure that if I reach out to them, I'm like giving them good communication the whole time through otherwise it just doesn't end well for everybody yeah yeah no I agree with that as well and it's hard like I I'm like that as well I'm very in the moment and then I'm in the next moment so I forgot <laughs> about the last moment mm -hmm. um so I have all these like things to you know I have google sheets and calendars and and even with all of that things are still falling through the cracks and it gives me such high anxiety um and I wish I just had like the way maybe I just need someone to follow around follow me around and just like pick up all the 
the pieces I drop. But um, yeah, I, I totally stuff. get that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe an assistant would be better. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, well, we're so excited to keep this conversation going. We have another episode um, with Sheila and we're going to continue. Uh, the next episode title is called How to Monetize Your Events. Um, so we're going to kind of wrap up and transition into the Sister Gark portion. But can you tell us where people can find you? Sure. Yep. So um you can find me on uh, uh, LinkedIn under my name, the big long one, Sheila Farah Herjama. Um, I am on Facebook at Connected Sponsors. And if any, and we can probably talk about this in the next one as well. I also have um, a little kind of um, training that I give away for free. If anyone wants to get that, it's at ConnectedSponsors.com forward slash finding sponsors. Connected sponsors. Sponsors.com. So C O N N E C T E D S P O N S O R S dot com forward slash finding sponsors. Nice. All smushed together. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. Cool. And I am excited about this story because you were telling me that you had a joint venture experience that you want to tell us about. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this was like our first joint venture experience. And it's it's with this gentleman, Jeremy, that, that we were in business for years. So um <clears throat> And this was another one of those situations where we didn't really know what a joint venture was. Or run, like we were going to run a webinar and offer this guy's product to our database. Um, so he was speaking at an event that we were at and I approached him and I was like, you know, and I thought I was asking a big ask. I was basically asking him if he could, you know, spend an hour and a half so he could sell these things to our database. <laughs> but I thought it was a big ask at the time. I was like, oh, you probably don't want to do this, but could you think you could? And so um, we set up the date and it was the week before Thanksgiving because we didn't want to do it on Thanksgiving week. We thought that would be bad. And at this point, Jeremy was living in California. Um, we had uh, like an office out in California that she had a couple of people working there for him. And I was just working out of my home here. And um, he got on the phone. We all got on the phone together. And this is before Zoom or anything. So it was just kind of a tele seminar. Um, no, sorry, it wasn't. It was um, it was a live webinar. So we we're going through go to webinars so you could see his slides and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but we couldn't see each other. So we're just kind of on the phone together talking. And then um, he would uh, put his screen up on, on go to webinar and do it that way. So uh, we were kind of chatting beforehand, making sure everything was OK and we get started. And next thing, Jeremy's texting me. He's like, the phones are going crazy already. This is crazy, you know? So like the phone kept ringing in the office in California. And I was like, wow, I wonder what's going on. So we went through the entire hour and a half webinar. Um, we're listening to him on the phone so we can hear everything. We're seeing the slides progress. And like a webinar is a very kind of choreographed thing. You, you know, you mm -hmm. build up your value and then you do a close at the end, um, you know, but it's obviously it needs both audio and slides for it to work. So we get off it at the very end and Jeremy picks up the phone messages, the multiple, multiple phone messages from people saying we can't hear anything. So oh. we forgot to turn on the audio. So no. the whole thing went out. They saw the whole pitch, like the, the final thing with the price and all the rest of it and um, obviously nobody bought because they didn't really know what it was except for the <laughs> slides that they were reading if they stayed that long um, so we're like oh my gosh what do we do and this is the first time we ever ran a webinar and so we decided okay you know what there's nothing for it but we're just going to run it again so we ran it on the Tuesday of the following week with Thanksgiving being on the Thursday so at that point like people are traveling, they're doing whatever, but it's just like, let's just do it, get it done and see what happens. So we ran it again with audio and we actually had a really good result. We, we like sold quite a number of his courses. So it, it was a really good result. Um, but, you know, it's like these things happen at the time. It was, it was like the greatest disaster, especially where we kind of felt like we'd let this guy down so badly. We're like, oh, we're such amateurs. You know, we didn't even know how to work, <laughs> go to webinar. But um, it turned out for the best. But the, kind of my lesson behind all of that is no matter what, just keep going. It's like, you know, you're going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. Um, just learn from them and move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> been there, done that. At first yep. one, our our uh, mics were turned down all oh, the way. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> we yeah. felt so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's funny. So <laughs> thank you so much for for joining with us and and chatting with us and telling your stories it's been fun and we're excited to do our next episode with you um if you guys liked this week's episode then go ahead and give us a review on apple podcast and we will see you again next week <laughs>